Hello and welcome. I'm Fernando, a GP in the UK. Today we're looking at the NICE guideline on neuropathic pain and because of a slight clinical overlap, I will also touch on the management of sciatica. Please note that we'll be focusing only on the pharmacological treatment through a primary care perspective. So let's jump into it. And we will start with a very straightforward condition, trigeminal neuralgia. And for this, we will offer carbamazepine, initially 100 mg once or twice a day, increasing gradually according to response. The usual dose is 200 mg three or four times a day, but it can be increased to a maximum of 1.6 grams daily in divided doses. Of course, we will bear in mind that there is a risk of major congenital malformations in pregnancy and advise contraception accordingly. And we have nothing else to offer in primary care, so if carbamazepine is not effective or suitable, we will need to refer. For all other neuropathic pain, we will discuss with the patient whether to give oral or topical treatment. If the neuropathic pain is localized and they wish to avoid or cannot tolerate oral treatments, we will consider capsaicin cream. Otherwise, we will offer a choice of amitriptyline, duloxetine, gabapentin or pregabalin as the initial treatment. Gabapentin and pregabalin are controlled drugs, so it would make sense to start with either amitriptyline or duloxetine first to minimize the risk of dependency. If the initial treatment is not effective or tolerated, we will offer one of the remaining three drugs and consider switching again if the second and third drugs are also not effective or not tolerated. And as a general rule, when withdrawing or switching treatment, we will taper the dose to minimize any withdrawal symptoms. So for me, considering the cost of drugs and risk of dependency, I would consider amitriptyline first, then duloxetine, then gabapentin, and lastly pregabalin. We will refer if despite treatment the pain is severe, disabling or affecting the sleep, or if their underlying condition has deteriorated. As acute rescue therapy, we could consider tramadol, but only for short-term use. The rest of the guidelines is going to sound a little bit like this. No, 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 no. Because it is going to tell us what treatments should not be used, and we should not start cannabis extract, capsaicin patch, opiates like morphine and tramadol, but this is referring to long-term use because careful short-term use of tramadol is allowed. Venlafaxin, anti-epileptics such as lacosamide, lamotrigine, levetiracetam, oxcarbazepine, topiramate or sodium valproate. So in summary... No, 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 no. For sciatica there is a separate guideline and from a pharmacological perspective we are very limited because nothing really seems to work very well in sciatica. We can give non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or NSAIDs, but we need to be aware of the risks and limited evidence that they are of much benefit. If prescribing NSAIDs for sciatica, we will take into account gastrointestinal, liver and cardiorenal toxicity and the person's risk factors including age. We will think about risk factors and the use of gastroprotective treatment and we will use the lowest effective dose for the shortest possible time. Can we use anything else if NSAIDs do not work? For acute low back pain, we can consider weak opioids with or without paracetamol, but only when managing acute low back pain and only if an NSAID hasn't worked or can't be used. We should not offer paracetamol alone for low back pain and we should not be giving opioids for ongoing non-acute sciatica. For chronic sciatica, if NSAIDs are not effective, we're going to encounter the same as before. So we should not offer gabapentinoids, other antiepileptics, oral corticosteroids, benzodiazepines, or opioids. So in summary... No, 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 no. If a person is already taking any of these drugs, we will consider a safe and gradual withdrawal regime. Although we're focusing on the pharmacological treatment, I would like to say that we should also discuss non-pharmacological treatments, for example, physical and psychological therapies and surgery. We will advise self-management and appropriate exercise, including return to work programs if possible. 
Psychological therapy or manual therapies like spinal manipulation or massage should be offered only as part of a treatment package, including exercise. And combined physical and psychological programs should be offered for people with persistent and significant symptoms who should not offer orthotics, such as belts, corsets or foot orthotics, traction, acupuncture, ultrasound or electrical nerve stimulation, either percutaneous or transcutaneous. So... No, 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 no. We have come to the end of this episode. Remember that this is not medical advice and it is only my summary and my interpretation of the guidelines. You must always use your clinical judgment. Thank you for watching and goodbye.